Okay, I hope each one of you have a copy of the scriptures that I'm going to be referencing. If, and if you don't want to use this, just turn to Revelation 6. It's what we're going to be sharing with you this morning. Um, this week, we were made to remember what happened 18 years ago. 9-1-1-0-1. 18 years ago, we all went through a traumatic thing. And certainly those closer to the scene, it was more traumatic to them than it was us. However, I took a little bath in that uh, yesterday, I spent about three hours looking at uh, on the internet at what has been captured and uh, the sad tales that people had as they said goodbye to their wives, to their companions, to their brothers and sisters, uh, the messages that people left from the towers, from the airplanes, as they tried to reach their relative desperately, saying, this is the last time I'm gonna get to talk to you. It's over for me. But let's rehearse just a little bit of that before we read our scripture this morning. And No one knew that this was going to happen, that these 20 men would go to flight school as they did led by Mohammed Atta, who his voice was also captured on the video that I listened to yesterday where he was telling the people to sit down and be quiet and you won't get hurt. You're going to die anyway, basically what he was saying. But a little history on that. It began that morning with Flight 11 of American Airlines. The first hint that they had that there was problems going on was on flight 11 that hit the north tower. But before we do that, let's move on to the other flights. Flight 175, the American Airlines, flew into the south tower. Flight 93 crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Flight 77 crashed into Pentagon. And lost, lives were lost everywhere, but not like it would have been had those people not resisted on Flight 93 and charged the cabin to get rid of those uh, murderous Muslims. Let's call them what they are. Muslim if you read up on it, is a religion of hate. Their doctrine is, if you don't believe like them, that you're to be killed. You read up on it. Don't take my word for it. But it began with a flight attendant by the name of Betty Ung, O-N-G calling American Airlines headquarters and telling them that she cannot get them to answer in the cockpit. And one of the pilots, she said, is stabbed it laying in the floor in there. And said, those guys that went into the cockpit won't answer the phone. And she said, the place is full of mace. They sprayed it and we can't hardly believe. We've been hijacked. Then, uh, eventually, they flew into the building. Many of us saw that on the uh, news channels that morning when the first plane hit the building. We said, my, that was a bad accident. What we thought initially, wasn't it? And then the, here comes another one, Flight 175, that crashes into the South Tower. A 
was not aware of it until I doing some study on it yesterday, that from the time the North Tower, which was the first one that was struck, before it fell was 102 minutes, over an hour and a half. People had to sweat the fact that they were going to die. They were trapped in that building. And if you will, if you get time, just pull up on the internet those flights, flight 11, 175, 93 or 77. Just pull up conversations from those planes and they're there to listen to. And brother, if, if they don't break your heart, nothing will. One sister called the other one, left her a message on the answer machine and they were able to retain it that way and told her, said, I love y'all, don't ever forget it. We've been hijacked and we're going to die. I won't get a chance to talk to you anymore, so I love you. And they played some of the sounds from Flight 93 where those guys agreed to charge the cabin to save other people. But in the distant sound, and I don't hear that well, but they said it was not that plain. But you hear people crying out, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Who would think about dying like that? You're in health, good health. But you know that time is limited. But there was conversation after conversation. Husbands telling wives and wives telling husbands saying, take care of the kids. It's the last time I'm going to talk to you. You won't hear my voice again. And the one sister I mentioned telling the other one, she says, my safe, she gave her the passwords to her deposit box and what have you. So she at least somebody could take advantage of what she was leaving behind. But most people wanted to tell others that they loved them. Don't ever forget that I love you. One man told his wife, you go ahead and live out your life and enjoy it. Because I won't be with you, you still need to enjoy your life. Unselfish like, he spoke to his wife. And that was conversation after conversation. If, if you've got time, it's better than watching a football game. It'll at least make you appreciate your family and life. Folk, we take for granted, don't we? But all these people wanted to know that they loved their loved ones. That they were going to miss them. And I got to tell you, if you don't cry a little bit, something's wrong with you. When you hear those pleas and those sad farewells, forever farewells in many cases, But in the name of Allah, Muhammad Atta led those other 19. One of them got arrested. It was five on each plane, but one got arrested, so they were one short and happened to be on flight 93. No one knew what was happening. And had we known, we'd have tried to prevent it, would we not? And you know what's the sad thing is, we're still letting those Muslims in. And they're even taking the Bible now and the Koran, they're swearing on it instead of the Bible. Why are we concerned about illegals coming in here? That's one of the reasons because of whence they come, especially those countries there in the Mideast. So none of us knew. Before, what I want to share with you this morning, the main thing, I, but I mention all this because of what happened this week. And compared to what's going to happen, it's not even a drop in the bucket, so to speak, of what judgment is hanging over us.
I did not include it on my page. But in the beginning of Revelations, Revelations 1, verse 1, I'm going to read to you. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which gave unto him, God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Not may come to pass. They must come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. And the Lord gave it to John, and John pens it, he writes it, and we've got Revelation 6, if you will, and let's read that together. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, John, come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer now, let me help you all a little bit as we study this. This is the Antichrist that he's speaking of. Came on a white horse. Verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. There went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that set thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And that was given unto him a great sword. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, John, come and see. And behold, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny. Three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. When he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And I believe in this case it means the grave. It means many people were going to the grave. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and the brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Stars of the heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when shaken, she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of the, their places. The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And he winds it up and he said, And who shall be able to stand? And that's what I want us to consider for the next few minutes here this morning. But verse 1 and 2, we have the first seal that was opened. 
And it's a photo of the Antichrist. He comes in on a white horse. He comes in peacefully as a propagator of peace. And he establishes a seven-year contract of peace with the people. Seven years. You remember, he causes people to receive his mark in their right hand or in their forehead. But then we have the red horse rider coming in verse 3 and 4. When he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast saying, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given unto him to set up their own to take peace from the earth that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. If you read a little bit further in the scripture, that seven-year peace pact lasts for 42 months, three and one-half years. And the covenant is broken, or the peace agreement that the Antichrist had declared on his generation was abandoned, the peace agreement was. And the red horse signifies of the blood that's going to be shed in the beginning there when that peace agreement is broken by the Antichrist. But then from that we go to the black horse rider, verse 5. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, John, come and see. And I beheld, and lo, there was a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances or scales in his hands. And I heard that voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Ninety-eight percent, ninety-eight percent of the world's population does not grow anything or plant anything anymore. My dad, is, I loved him. He worried when he people quit having gardens and crops and what have you. He said people are gonna starve to death. Ninety-eight percent of the world's population is fed by the other. Two percent. You can go to the RFD channel, which Linda and I watch quite a lot. It, it gives the farming news and what's going on in the real world all the time, and it shows those great uh, agricultural crops that are being planted, and, and they do it in a, a huge way. But something's going to happen to all this. The system's going to break. And there's not going to be anything to eat. And that's why we have the black horse which speaks of death. People will be starving literally to death. Verse 7 and 8. When he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast saying, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part, fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. One-fourth of the population of the world, the scripture says here, is going to die. Later on, one-third dies. But you take one-fourth, six billion, one and a half billion people. 911 took the lives of over 3,000 people in those buildings and in those planes. 
a lot of loss of life, but it's not anything compared to one and a half billion or ever how many the population is on the earth. Well, one fourth of them at least will die in this case. And folks, this is not something that John said it must happen. Why would I declare the message to you? Because it's part of the Word of God. If I don't warn you that I haven't done what God's called me to do, that this time is going to come on the earth. I'm not setting dates. It's wrong to do that. It's the Lord's business at what time, but he gave us signs, didn't he? Things that were going to be unraveling during the time when he comes back together us unto him. But during this time of the pale horse, things are going to be gruesome. Can you imagine one and a half billion people dying? No, I don't think you can. Let's go on to the fifth seal, verse 9. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Jesus tells us that they'll deliver you up before the councils and many of you be put to death for my name's sake. Is that what he said earlier? And now we have a record of it, of those that were put to death in his name. They had a picture this week of eight Muslims that had con converted to Christianity. It had all of them pictured together that they had already now been sentenced to die over in Iran. On Facebook. But the Lord warned us ahead of time that we may have to die if we take a stand. Oh, we represent someone that had to die, didn't we? His name was, is, and always will be Jesus. He died because he took a stand. Number one, because he loved us. If you stand faithfully, especially if we see the end time approaching, you'll probably have to die. Let's move on to the sixth seal in verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Sister Mary is talking about an earthquake she heard about this morning. But folks, what I'm telling you about is pinned already. It's part of the future history of this world. I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake. And listen to what all that damage it did. It wasn't down here on Long Point where they've got that fall line going through. Which very well could... Uh, they claim uh, could be affected. But when the earthquake came in verse 12, the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. Any of y'all see that harvest moon yesterday, day before? Linda and I got a real good picture of the harvest moon as it stood full. And large. But the moon here is going to be as blood. The reflection of what's coming off the earth. And verse 13 says, When that earthquake came, the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Yeah. 
verse 15 says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the great, the mighty men, and every bond man, bond man, excuse me, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. You know, our Lord letting things slide right now. He letting things slide. He's holding, withholding judgment that our generation is due. But his wrath is going to show. And we find it especially toward the Antichrist. That's going to come. But verse 17 says, For the great day of his wrath is come. And the question, Who shall be able to stand? The population of the earth, when that earthquake comes, is going to seek refuge from the rocks. Oh, well, let's look at verse 11. Back to verse 11 quickly. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. White robes were given unto them. And the scripture further says they were made white by the blood of the Lamb. We think of blood staining stuff, don't we? But not the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. His blood was sinless. His blood was perfect. He washes cleanse with his blood. And folk, that's why we're here today. Because he's going to give us white robes that were made white in his own blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, our God that loved us and made us in his own image came and shed his precious life's blood that we might spend eternity with him. This old earth, it got some bad things ahead of them. The Lord said, not one hair of our head would perish. He's going to take care of us. Think about it. The old apostle Paul, when he laid his head on that cruel piece of work and they chopped his head off they just moved Paul into that new body and that's what's going to happen with the Christian folk when we, when we move out of this old body we move into one like his could be somebody here today that wants to make a move for the Lord I don't know what your need is if you haven't followed the Lord in baptism and you've trusted Christ, the next thing you need to do is be baptized. But I'll leave that to you and the Lord.